one Camino fellow pilgrims, and welcome back to the Shelter Hunter channel. If you are currently gearing up for your upcoming Camino de Santiago, be it your first, second, third, fourth, fifth, you know preparation is key. Otherwise, you wouldn't have discovered us. And that said, I have got a tip, trick, and hack for you today. That's right. In today's episode, we are exploring a real deal game changer when it comes to prepping for your Camino. So get ready to supercharge your pre-communal fitness routine in less time when we return. Okay, folks, as promised. I don't know if I've seen this anywhere else, but this one is really, um, it's, it's, I guess it's just something that no one's really talking about when it comes to the Camino. At least if it is, I haven't seen it yet in any forums, groups, or anywhere online. But luckily when I was training for my first Camino, I had time and I had space and a place to, well, practice hiking, practice hiking, hike. Um, I was able to do four miles a day in under an hour. This is in the Arizona desert, however. There was very little hills, so I didn't get to practice hills as much, but it was flat desert. Turf. Turf. I mean, I could see the entire route. I was going around a field. It was rather monotonous. I was lucky enough to have the space and place to train. I could put in four miles in under an hour. I was rucking. It will come to all of my training tactics and tricks in future videos when it comes to rocking and carrying weight and so on and so forth. But for now, we're gonna focus on how to work more hard, how to work harder with less time and less space. I mean, I know a lot of people live in the cities or not, not just no, nowhere near the trails that they should be living near. Should you? Should they? Maybe not. I know it's very difficult to get away and find a trailhead and train, train. Uh, especially if you don't live near them. You might be able to just only hit them up on the weekends. That said, maybe you live in the city. Maybe you live in uh, just a neighborhood, um, the, the burbs, if you will. So you can still walk. You can still hike. Well, you might stand out doing it in the city with a, back, a backpack on and with trekking poles. But I mean, it's what you make of it. If you work in an office, if you work in a building on the fifth floor or whatever, during your lunch break, hut, dinner hut. break, you can use the stairs Hike. to practice hiking. You can get your miles in there. You can get your steps in, if you will, there. And you probably don't have enough time or a lot of time to do this. But what I'm going to share with you today, it's going to turn one mile into two. It's going to turn two miles into four. So on and so forth. It's just going to increase whatever limited time you have. It's going to put more. It's going to give you more bang for your buck, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Can you tell I'm excited? When I ever discovered these, it was just like. It's about resistance pants, folks. What? Yeah, it's something I actually was calling training pants for a while, and I'd get these weird looks from people with children. You're wearing training pants? I am. No. Resistance pants, folks. You're probably wondering what resistance pants are and why I'm so excited about them. Well, let me explain. Resistance pants are leggings that actually have resistance bands sewn into them. They add resistance to every time you walk. Every time you take a step, they add resistance to that. It's like walking through, I don't know, yellow maybe so you're building endurance with every step you're burning more calories with every step you're toning your body with every new step you take while wearing these and that's why i'm excited you can wear them alone standalone as a man i don't really do that i'll probably wear shorts over them i've actually worn shorts over them or i'll wear them underneath it depends what time of year it is too wear them underneath my pants um and they come in a couple of different varieties you have uh, leggings and you also have like cycle type shorts. There's a couple different brands out there and we're gonna be exploring two of them today. I mean, lots of people don't train and do the Camino and they turn out fine, but that first week, second week, a lot of injuries, a lot of pain, um, which can be fun. It can be a bonding experience with other people who are going yeah, through the pain, boy. the trials and tribulations of a Camino. However, you don't have to be that person. You can enjoy it from the get go. You don't have to worry about the recovery period. You can be ready for it. Um, when it comes to training, you might wanna start a month out Start as actually as early as possible training is what it all comes down to. Everyone's talking about, you know, we're using a lighter bag, yada, 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 carrying less. You carry your, you know, your worries on your back. One of the first ways to carry less weight 
is to carry less weight on you. So training as soon as possible, cross training, whatever it be. Some people argue that you should only be training for the hike by hiking. I disagree with that. If you can convince me otherwise, oh. leave a comment below. But I mean, even boxers, they don't just practice boxing before the fight. Wise guy, You've seen eh? Rocky. You do it all. You jog, you bike, you cycle, you hit the speed bag, whatever it may be. You cross train and all the while you're just burning calories and you're losing weight as well. And that's great. The less weight on your feet, the better off you'll be, arguably. So, resistance fans add to this. You'll be burning more calories with less. I should probably just actually show them to you. Here we go. I know what you're thinking. But trust me, these are awesome. And let's see, can you see the bands? You can kind of see the bands. See the bands on the inside? In these goji pants, the bands run down the front, the side, and the rear of the leg. And they work composing muscle groups. When you're walking, the front bands will target your hamstrings and your lower abdominal muscles. And the rear flex bands inside here will target the quads and the glutes. So you're working out by, I mean, you can wear these all day long too. You really can and turn every, and everything you do, every movement you do with your legs, that is, into a slight exercise. So that's pretty much the, the tip, the hack in a nutshell is like get the most out of the limited time you have by incorporating resistance pants into your training. Uh, you can use these while working out as well. It doesn't need to be hiking, jogging, cycling. You may not actually feel the resistance at first, if at all, but trust me, you'll notice it if you're not wearing them. And you'll also notice it after you're done working out, how your legs feel. They're pretty intense. These uh, Agoji brand come in two different band strengths, uh, a 40 and a 20. 40 is, I don't know if it's comparable to 40 pounds and 20 is 20 pounds. It might be now, I think. Regardless, 40 pounds is more resistance. This is for more intense workouts, like shorter workouts. At least that's what the site says. I personally went for the 40s because I'm insane. I'm pretty extreme. And I wanted the most resistance because this was something I was really digging as an idea. And kind of an idea I came up with on my own, which had in my mind, I had bands attached to my ankles and to a, a board on the back of my backpack that hung down like a tail. And every time I took a step forward, it would create resistance. No need to do that. These pants cover all of that and more. So now look, let's look at this other brand. And these are Physiclo, the Physiclo brand. These are more like cycle shorts, if you can see. I be, believe Physiclo was the original resistance pants maker. And then others followed suit with different designs, maybe better designs even. There's a few makers out there now, but my favorite is Physiclo and a goji. These are great for the summer, the cycle shorts. These are great worn under shorts, even under pants as well. But obviously due to the length, they don't cover the entire leg. But still, you feel this in your glutes, you feel it in the hammies. You feel it, I just said hammies. You feel it in your hamstrings, that's gym spin. You feel this in your hamstrings, feel it in the quads. It's really, it's, it's something else. It also gives you a little like kickback too. I notice this especially when hiking hills, where you are working with some resistance, you're also getting some spring action too when hiking with these. So again, turn two miles into four miles, turn four miles into eight miles, whatever length of time you have or whatever amount of distance you have to train with, add these to your training and up the ante. It's gonna engage more muscles, it's gonna build endurance, it's gonna tone your body, it's gonna burn more calories. Again, I, you know, I prefer different ones for different routines, if you will. So colder weather, I'm gonna go with the Agoji, although I have worn these. These are super durable lightweight and they breathe really well so they can be worn in the summer these are a little bit different however they have heel anchors they have heel anchors that actually <laughs> almost function as half socks so this is what keeps the pants in place because that's important you really have to find the right size for you in order for them to work properly so the heel anchors need to be in place and you need to pull these up high there's a drawstring that you would tighten to keep them in place because there will be a little bit of movage movage there will be a little bit of movement of the pants as you're working out and as you sweat, you know, you, you, they might droop a little. That said, I have you covered with my typical tip. ABS sock stop. You know where this is going. You know, and there's also an ABS sock, sock stop in black too, if you're a little more vain, you don't want it to pop out. I don't know why they don't come with um, some type of coating on here, grippy coating, silicone coating on the in, on the inner waistband. Maybe they do in the newer ones. I know they have a they have new colors and new variations on the Agoji's website currently. I'll have links below. And so maybe they've upgraded to that. However, if they haven't, quick, easy tip. 
ABS sock stuff. So yeah, once again, I've lined the inside waistband and these that keeps these pants in place while I'm wearing them. Same thing with the Fizzy Clo. I've lined them with ABS sock stop and it keeps them in place too. And these, this band's actually really grippy. It doesn't have a drawstring, but it's a super grippy band. It will hug you. In fact, it leaves imprints of the ABS on my, my hips, actually. Probably too much information. Besides using ABS sock stop in the waistbands, I also recommend using an anti-chafing cream, which you should be training with anyways, because you're gonna be walking on the Camino, well, depending on your fitness level, and hopefully after using these, it'll be up. You'll be walking for probably up to eight hours a day. You could cut that in half, maybe. But still, you're walking all day. You're walking for hours and hours and hours, hours on end. If your body's, you know, if you have issues with things, parts are rubbing, you're going to start chafing. You're going to... Friction in the wrong places is just wrong. Friction in the right places is just wrong. But moving on. What you need is a type of... Well, this is a body butter. This is chamois butter. I've gotten this at REI. I've purchased this at REI EMS. You can find this at any place. You can find it online. I'll have a link below. That's a good one. And then, of course, there's Body Glide, a classic. Also found at uh, outdoor stores or online. I'll have links below again, too, to make it easy for you. And also, I've created my own. This is the Peregrino Super Slip Anti Chafing Stick. It kind of rhymes. Biodegradable container, scentless. But this stuff will do the trick, folks. It will keep everything pretty much not greased up, but it'll protect the skin from chafing. It will, and I recommend the inner thigh. Anywhere else you feel like there's rubbing or a hot spot, pretty much the same way you would treat a hot spot on your foot, you would want to treat on your body with an anti-chafing stick. So keep that in mind. And especially with these pants, these pants, again, have flex bands sewn into them. So, though they're not exposed to the skin, they're within the material, they're still crisping and cro crossing over your skin and may create some type of irritation. So make sure you have some type of protection on. Um, you know, funny story about that. I actually had both of these on my first Camino and, and every morning before I left, getting dressed, I would apply this first. Because not that I was having a problem with rubbing, always if ever but i didn't want to so rather than wait for that to happen i would just you know preemptively rub myself down with this in certain places that said one morning i got up and i was outside the i was out the door i was out the door with my friends we were heading and i was like oh i forgot to use my body glide luckily it was in my uh sling bag so it was close at hand yeah that's another thing too is always keep it close at hand not just in your overnight bag or your dop kit you can keep some there especially if you're going to be putting it on in the morning but I say keep some at hand too, just along the way if you need to touch up or if you just need to apply some, have it at the ready. And they make smaller bottles. I think they make smaller bottles of this. I can't remember. Regardless, in that, you know, and that, I should actually, before I go on with my story, this one is a cardboard tear off. That means once this is open, it's open. So you can fold it over and put it in a Ziploc, but you know, anything in a tube is gonna be better because you can, you know, close it. Where this is like a butter, once it's open, it's going everywhere. So keep that in mind. Anyways, so I was like, oh, I forgot to put it on. So I ran behind this building while my friends kept going. I was like, I'll catch up to you. And I'm on the side of the building, my hand down my pants, applying this stuff in different places. And all these pilgrims <laughs> walked by me as I got my hand. Oh like, my God. And I'm chasing them. It's not what you think. It's not, I'm not the bad guy. It was, it was, yeah. The community will humble you. It will also make you look a little creepy sometimes too. Anyways, to go over it again, you want to train with resistance pants. There'll be links below. The prices are affordable, especially if you're already using leggings in your training. There's a slight compression to some of these. These have compression as well. The benefits outweigh the cost when it comes to utilizing these pants in your training. Be them fizzy clothes or be them a goji. I recommend them both. Huge fan. And this is a short episode today, eh? Unlike me. Let's try to make this ending dramatic. Remember, the road to Santiago is not about the destination. It's about the journey and how well we prepare for it. By leveraging the power of resistance training, you're not only strengthening your body, but also empowering your spirit for the adventures that lie ahead of all of us on the Camino de Santiago. So lace up your boots, slip into your resistance pants, and take that first step into a personal, physical, 
transformative experience. Whether you're walking the Camino Frances, Del Norte, Via de la Plata, the Portuguese, Primitivo, know that every step is towards personal growth, resilience, and pretty much unforgettable memories. And with that, it's time to sign off. But this is not goodbye, folks. No, 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 fellow pilgrims. It's actually the beginning of a great, I promise you, adventure. Possibly the last of the great adventures. Well, let's hope not. This is the Shell Touch Channel, your guide to all things Camino. Please, if you like this episode, like it. Wait, that makes no sense. Well, it kind of makes sense. But if you like this episode, please like this episode. See, give it a thumbs up. Also, please comment. I'd love to know what you're thinking, your thoughts. I can't do this without your your input. I need to know what you want. I want to deliver. If I don't hear from you, I'll just have to keep going on these rants, these... And who knows where they'll lead? Santiago, that's where they'll lead. But yes, please like and subscribe as well. We really appreciate your subscription to the channel. It helps the channel. What also helps the channel is you using our affiliate links below. It's no cost to you, and it really does a world of good in, in part by filling the coffers for my next trip. Okay. <laughs> who am I kidding? No coffers are being filled, but it does aid in purchasing coffee, little cafe solo, on my next adventure out there. Where I'll be sure to come up with even more tips tricks and hacks to share with you on a future episode. So thanks for tuning in, people. Until next time. Wait for it. One